What's cracking with your snack and snacker stars? It's Brandon from the SAS of Snack Food Appreciation Society coming at you with another exciting edition of Pizza Night. Me and some of my rowdy friends are coming over and we're bringing a pizza from the freezer aisle on this frozen Friday edition of Pizza Night. I'll be right back to get right into it. Never fear, pizza night is once again here, so grab yourself a can of beer. It's Friday night, November 20th, 2015. I do have a tough life. Could you do this all day? Yes, yes I could. Anyway, today I am back here at SAS headquarters with the ridiculously expensive Brandon Sack 5000 as always, and what is within the Brandon sack today? Well, let's open up this bad boy and find out. There we go. Oh, it's a brand new frozen pizza on this frozen Friday. And that pizza is from Brew Pub Pizza. It's called the Lotsa Matza Pepperoni Pizza. Of course I got pepperoni pizza. Why wouldn't I? I got this pizza at Harris Teeter down in Sherlington in Arlington, Virginia uh, for $9.99. First time I've ever noticed this brand before. Uh, they had four or rather three other types there. Uh, they had a cheese variety, of course. They had a sausage and pepperoni. And they had a four meat. But you know me, I gotta find out, can you make a good pepperoni pizza? Because if you can't make a good pepperoni pizza, you can't make a pizza. Anyhow, this is a a company or a pizza rather made by uh, Bernatello I believe it's called and they also make a couple of other brands of pizza including Roma pizza and another one that you'll see at Harris Teeter a lot of times which is called uh, Bellatorio they do a thin uh, pizza anyway lots of matzo by brew pub and the reason it's called lots of matzo is obvious taking a look at it here in the package but let's get this wrapper off and I will uh, let you know more about why it's called lots of matzo. Okay there it is and as you can see the reason why it's called lots of matzo is look at all that mozzarella cheese and it's not just little shredded up pieces of mozzarella cheese these are big thick slices of mozzarella cheese on there I guess it's shredded as well but it's a very uh, wide shred underneath there you have your pepperoni. I really can't tell what's going on with that because I see what looks to be a couple of small pieces of pepperoni as well as slices. Not sure. But one thing I am worried about is look at how thin that crust is, man. That's going to crisp up real, real quick, especially with these instructions. Basically what it wants me to do, and I'll show them to you so you can read them too. It wants me to preheat to 400, put it directly on the rack, position in the center, of course. And they want me to cook for 18 to 23 minutes. That means I'm going to be checking this thing at like 14 minutes or something like that. Because you know how hot my oven gets. Alright guys. Let's go ahead and stick this bad boy in the oven. See what it looks like when it comes out. Slice it up. Taste it. Tell you what I think about it and more on pizza night. Alright gang. I am back. Let's take a look at the finished results. This is after 13 minutes ladies and gentlemen. And to keep in mind it said 18 to 23 on the box at 400 I did this at a little bit between 375 and 400 for 13 minutes turning it once in between and I mean I couldn't have left it in for much longer look how brown the crust is getting along the edges you are getting some brownage in some of the cheese area right there I will admit I almost fumbled causing a little bit of slidage over here on this side of the pie near the 420 slice but hey, it smells fantastic. I love the way that cheese looks, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it tastes. Let me go ahead and slice it up for you, and I'll show you the 420 slice. All right, gang, I've sliced it up. As you can see, it's sliced into eight fairly equal slices. Uh, looks pretty good still. Uh, I think this is probably about a 14-inch pie, so it's a little bigger than some of the frozen pies that you get. Was $9.99, so a little pricier than some of the pies that you get. But then again, Harris Teeter is quite a bit pricier than some grocery stores. All right, let me go ahead and pick out what's closest to the 420 slice, which would be this bad boy right there. Pick it up for you. And as you can see, that cheese is already sliding off of the front right there. I can't really catch it because I only have one hand. 
but uh, getting closer there you see a very red sauce revealed and uh, still not seeing a lot of the pepperonis in there but hopefully they come through in the flavor on the first bite let's go ahead and uh, get that first bite and tell you how what I think about it give it a rating and more next on pizza night all right, gang, I am back. This thing, the cheese, looks absolutely fantastic on their website. They promote that there is about a half a pound of cheese or more on this pizza, and I'm really excited to take a bite out of it. Now, one thing, of course, because the cooking time was cut short by my uh, a little bit too hot oven, so to speak, uh, the pepperonis might not have gotten cooked all the way through. That is a possibility here, so always a variable involved when you cook a pizza over at Brandon's house. Pick up that 420 again, show it to you next to my face. For a frozen pizza, that's a pretty decent slice of pizza, especially when you got eight on your plate. All right, guys, let me go ahead and take a bite of this thing before this cheese hits the floor. So far, really interesting and tasty, but I didn't get a bite of pepperoni on that first bite, I don't think. Or if I did, it didn't taste like much. Let me try one more bite and let you know what I think. As usual, I'm without a set of napkins, but hey, who cares? I got my tongue and my fingers right. Anyhow, this pizza right here is very, very tasty. Um, the pepperoni is deceiving. You don't quite get it at first, but then you do because it's literally layered underneath that thick layer of cheese. It's kind of like if you've ever had a calzone or a pepperoni roll or something like that when you get all that pepperoni in there with all that cheese it kind of they play off of each other and mix together and you don't know which is which for a second you kind of get that effect there until the meat flavor comes through not the strongest uh tasting pepperoni in the business but pretty good a little bit of a zest to it and it was well cooked uh despite the low cooking time uh the cheese is the star of the show without a doubt when you saw me take that first bite, you saw that stretch come off of there. That's what I desire in my pizza. I don't like that clumpy cheese that's scientifically engineered not to clump or whatever. Screw that. I like my mozzarella cheese to stretch and pull and whip back and burn my chin and all that good stuff. That makes me feel like I really just ate a real pizza and it tasted really good too. Very creamy with just a hint of smoke and uh, that mozzarella twang that you get near the end excellent excellent cheese um, the sauce not overly flavorful but a perfect amount of the sauce it's got a little bit of a tomatoey zestiness uh, rather than a you know subtle sort of savoriness it's not very sweet just a little bit of tang I like the sauce pretty well and then you have the crust and actually with this crust I think they were attempting to go to a pretty close to like a New York style crust because it is, even though it's done, it's still pretty flappy, but it ends up getting just a little too crackery on the bottom side and that starts to seep up through the rest of the crust as well, uh, resulting in a bit of a crunch rather than a pull and a tear. Uh, so not quite great there, but better than most thin and crispy pizzas that I've had. I don't like thin and crispy pizza. This crust is all right. It's almost reminiscent in some ways, don't get me wrong, of the Totino's crust, but it tastes better. It's got a little bit more of the yeast appeal to it in terms of the flavor, a little bit more bleachiness. Things I like in my crust. So this all together is a pretty good experience uh, with me and the Brew Pub Lots of Matza Pepperoni Pizza 9.99 at your local Harris Teeter. I'm going to go ahead and give this bad boy a 7 eighths of a thumbs up. That's right, a 7 eighths of a thumbs up for the Brew Pub Lots of Matza Pepperoni Pizza. Check out their website. Just uh, put Lots of Matza, not Matzo, Matza in your uh, Google box there. And it'll take you to their website. And you'll find out all the different types of pizzas that they have outside of the four that I saw at Harris Teeter. Uh, I think there was like a, a Mexican one or something. No, no. In fact, they had a poll and they were asking if they should bring in a Mexican one. Uh, but they have, uh, I believe, um, all different types of meat ones. There was a vegetarian one, of course, as well. And then what I saw that was most interesting was a cheese fries pizza. And if I live to be 100, I will 
make sure I find that pizza and review it for you here on Pizza Night. Seven, eight thumbs up through the brew pub. Lots and lots of pizza. Thank you for watching Pizza Night. Stick with us with the SAS all throughout the weekend and in the upcoming week for the Thanksgiving festivities. Don't know what we're doing for a Thanksgiving special quite yet, but you will see it come uh, late Wednesday, early Thursday. So make sure you check that out as well as our uh, regular Quick Chips episode on th uh, Wednesday as well as we close out Pringles Month with an interesting flavor that I've been waiting to try. Also, uh, this weekend, rather than snack briefs, it'll be pushed aside. We will instead present part one of the Super Box Pennsylvania Potato Chip Extravaganza brought to you by our friend from the SAS who does not want a shout out. Go figure. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit you with part one on Sunday, part two a week from Sunday. Part one will feature several varieties of Middle Swarth potato chips. Check it out on Sunday. Thank you for watching. Check out the link down below. On uh, Facebook, we have a group, and you should join it. Be part of that group, and if you're not, you should be ashamed of yourself. Also, follow me on Twitter at BrandonReichSAS. Also, use the Instagram as well with BrandonReichSAS, and you'll see some interesting photographs. I promise, not too, not too creepy. Anyway, no matter what you do on the social media, use the hashtag Snack Society to indicate that you're one of the SAS, the Snack Food Appreciation Society, when you talk about snacks, and when you're looking for talk about snacks, Use that hashtag as well. We'll look it up. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, in between time, help us get to 500K by New Year's Day. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.